Howdy, buckaroos. It's time for another adventure in zoonosis with the Vet Med Academy. Today we're going to be discussing leptospirosis. Leptospirosis is a disease that can affect virtually all mammals, including man. As such, it is called a zoonosis and is seen around the world. The disease can cause anywhere from a mild subclinical infection to death due to organ failure. It is caused by infection pathogenic species of Leptospira. From here on, we'll call the disease Lepto for short. Leptospira are aerobic, gram-negative spirochete bacteria with a corkscrew appearance. Historically, there have been many classifications used, but genetic analysis now recognizes 21 species of Leptospires with nine being pathogenic, six being intermediate in pathogenicity, and six non-pathogenic. Some of the common leptospiral pathogens of domestic animals now have different species names that include serovar, or surface antigen immunogenicity subtypes. But this classification is beyond the scope of what we want to talk about here. It's useful to know that the revised nomenclature is now reflected in the scientific literature, but not on vaccine and pharmaceutical labels. Serovar and serogroup names remain in common use and are often still used when discussing the identification and management of leptospirosis. Pathogenic leptospirosis can occur in all mammals, but some species are more resistant. It is most frequently seen in cattle, swine, dogs, and horses. Cats seem to be resistant to disease but do show antibody titers against it after exposure. Leptospirosis can occur in wildlife and concern exists that they are a zoonotic source of infection for domestic animals or people. Although lepto is found worldwide, one finds it more often in warm, moist climates and as such it is endemic in much of the tropics. In temperate regions, Lepto is often seasonal, coinciding with periods of high rainfall. Within a region, often a specific serovar of lepto will dominate, being sustained within wildlife, domestic animal, and livestock maintenance hosts. In a maintenance host, one finds that many animals are infected, but with mild, acute signs, and infection persisting in the urinary and genital tracts. This explains how the spirochete is then passed into water sources. The importance of understanding pathogenic serovars of lepto is demonstrated by the fact that dogs are the maintenance host for leptospira and pterygons, serovar canicola. Vaccination has reduced the incidence of serovars canicola and icterohemorrhagiae. Today, it is likely that the serovars from wild animal maintenance hosts cause disease in dogs as incidental hosts. Transmission among maintenance hosts occurs through contact with infected urine, placental fluids, or milk, and occasionally venereally or transplacentally. Infection of incidental hosts occurs by indirect contact, most often through water contaminated with urine of maintenance hosts. Survival of the leptospires in the environment to allow transmission is favored by moist and warm conditions, as lepto is killed by freezing, dehydration, and exposure to sunlight. So, how does lepto lead to disease? The organism can enter the body by penetration of exposed mucous membranes or damaged skin. Then, after an incubation period ranging from 4 to 20 days, they circulate in the blood and replicate in many tissues for 7 to 10 days. Clinical signs of acute lepto infections occur during bacteremia and tissue colonization. Antibodies against lepto can be found in serum shortly after bacteremia and eventually result in its clearance from the body. Acute clinical signs resolve following clearance of the organisms, but recovery of organ damage may take more time. If such damage is severe, chronic disease or death may ensue. Here is where the behavior of leptospires differs in a maintenance host compared with an incidental host. In an incidental host, 
Leptospires remain in the renal tubules for a short period and are shed in urine usually no longer than several weeks. In maintenance hosts, however, the bacteria remain most often in renal tubules and the genital tract and leptospires can be shed for as long as years after an infection, leading to their role as disease reservoirs. In maintenance hosts, infections are generally subclinical. However, in incidental hosts, lepto presents most often as an acute febrile illness characterized by damage to the kidney and or liver. Other body systems may be affected, resulting in uveitis, pancreatitis, bleeding, hemolytic anemia, muscle pain, or respiratory disease. People are susceptible to infection with pathogenic lepto species as incidental hosts. Of course, those with exposure to livestock or infected pets, such as veterinarians, staff, and farm workers, are at greater risk. For the general public, Exposure can come through recreational exposure to water contaminated by urine of domestic or wild animals. But an animal owner can also contract lepto from their pet or livestock. How does such exposure occur? Through contact of mucous membranes with blood or urine from the infected animal. In human patients, just like other incidental hosts, the disease can range from subclinical to multiple organ failure and death. Reported signs in human patients include fever, rash, headaches, ocular and muscle pain, and general weakness. Exposure of pregnant and breastfeeding women are of additional concern because transplacental infection has led to abortion, and breastfeeding has led to infection of the infant. Whenever lepto is on the differential diagnosis list, until it is ruled out, it is wise to handle animal body fluids only with gloved hands while wearing gowns and shoe covers to avoid spreading contamination. When handling wet bedding or cleaning cages, as organisms can be aerosolized, face shields should be worn. The diagnosis of lepto starts with the taking of a good clinical and vaccination history. Confirmation tests for lepto include detection of elevated serum antibody titers and or PCR or immunohistochemical test in tissues. The specific test used most frequently to diagnose animal patients is the microscopic agglutination test. We'll call it the MAT test. In this test, one mixes a solution containing live leptospires with dilutions of the animal's serum. The reported titer is the highest dilution of serum that results in 50% agglutination. There's also a commercial ELISA test which detects antibodies to a membrane protein of pathogenic leptospira. This assay is judged as positive or negative, but will also detect vaccine-induced antibody. Semi-quantitative versions of this ELISA test are now available for in-hospital testing. Interpretation of serological results from the MAT test is sometimes not easy because antibodies may cross-react, the presence of vaccine antibody titers, and a general lack of agreement on what titer reflects active infection. Post-vaccination, animals develop relatively low antibody titers from 1 to 100 up to 1 to 400 that might persist for 1 to 4 months or occasionally longer. In general, with a compatible clinical history and vaccination greater than three months prior, a titer of 1 to 800 up to 1 to 1600 is good presumptive evidence of leptospiral infection. However, as with many such antibody titer assays, it is best to evaluate the titer during acute disease and later following recovery. In cases of acute leptospirosis, a fourfold rise in antibody titer is often observed in paired serum samples collected seven to ten days apart. Titers may remain high for several months, but gradually fall with time. In tissues or urine sediment, immunofluorescent or molecular genetic techniques are used. In formal and fixed tissues, the sensitivity of immunofluorescence depends upon the number of organisms present. PCR techniques allow detection of pathogenic lepto in blood, urine, or tissue samples, but do not determine the serovar. However, culture is a difficult and slow process. Thus, it is more likely to be used in a research rather than a clinical setting. Culture of blood, urine, or tissue specimens is the only method to definitively identify the infecting serovar. 
Blood can be culture or PCR positive early in the disease course, whereas urine is more likely to be positive 7 to 10 days after clinical signs arrive. For domestic animals, avoidance is not a practical preventative, as rodents, raccoons, opossums, skunks, and other maintenance hosts are frequently found in most environments. Vaccination with polyvalent inactivated vaccines is the ideal preventative. Vaccines exist for dogs, cats, cattle, and horses. For humans, avoidance of likely contaminated water sources is the ideal goal. Antimicrobial treatment of leptospirosis varies somewhat between species. In the dog, a two-week course of doxycycline is preferred, but for animals not tolerating it, penicillin can initially be used. Doxycycline should eventually be used to eliminate the renal carrier phase. In horses, in addition to tetracyclines and penicillin, enrofloxin and aminoglycosides have been used. In ruminants and swine, tetracycline, oxycetracycline, penicillin, ceftiafur, tilmicosin, or dilothromycin have been used. To remove the renal carrier state, oxytetracycline is recommended. In summary, leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease caused by a gram-negative spirochete bacteria that induces subclinical or mild disease in maintenance hosts and can cause an acute febrile illness characterized by damage to the kidney and or liver in incidental hosts, including most domestic animals and man. Veterinary staff and animal workers are at greater risk of contracting leptospirosis, but the most common source of infection in the general public is exposure to water sources contaminated by urine of domestic or wild animals. Prevention is best accomplished through routine vaccination of domestic animals and appropriate antimicrobial treatment in the case of acute infections. Tetracyclines are recommended for eliminating the renal carrier state.